Well, here I am, back in the man cave. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Glacial Geek Deep Thoughts Thin Coats with me, Phil, the Glacial Geek. Uh, today, I am once again coming to you for here from Savannah, Georgia, where I will hopefully be for a little couple more weeks, and then we have to do some more traveling, but uh, yeah, lots of travels. <laughs> um, lots of travels, but uh, um, you know, it's all good. Getting to see family is always nice uh, during the holiday season, and, uh, and, uh, and some other travels coming up in January, which I'm very excited about, which isn't family oriented, but still a lot of fun. Uh, so we'll kind of get into uh, some of that preliminary stuff first. But um, uh, before we get into that, I'm just going to kind of go over what I'm going to go doing today. Today, I'm going to be finishing up um, working on two more uh, chaplains for my dark angels. I've got my, uh, my chaplain here, my um, primaris chaplain here, and then I've got uh, my interrogator chaplain with a power fist here. So I'm going to be finishing them up. Basically, I'm just going to be uh, finishing up the bases. I put on some of the sterling mud and uh, let that dry. So now I'm going to be doing a little bit of a dry brush onto it, then painting the sides so that they, uh, they're they just black along the edges and calling it a day with these guys. I think they're pretty much done. I might have to do uh, a shoulder emblem on him, and that's about it. Otherwise, uh, they're pretty good. I'm pretty excited about how they came out. Um, this is such a cool model, really, honestly. Uh, he was a lot of fun to work with, a lot of fun to paint. Um, uh, he was actually a gift from my friend Matt, which is super, super nice of him. Um, it was a going away gift as I was heading out of uh, Alaska. So that was super nice of him. Uh, this guy I just picked up myself, so I'm not too emotionally attached to this guy. <laughs> but I still think he came out pretty good with the purple and uh green robes. I think it looks kind of cool. Um, so yeah, so those are what I'll be working on today um, on the painting table. Uh, as far as discussion, I'm going to be talking about the viability of Primaris as a primary um, center of an army. So basically a Primaris Marine army. How viable is that option at this point and where do I see it going in the future? Uh, but before we go into that, I kind of want to talk about a few things. One is that in January, I will be going to LVO for the championships there. And I am super excited for that. Uh, they just hit the, uh, the 512 people to the max for their for the tournament, which is incredible. That I'll be competing against all of them. So, um, you know, fingers crossed that I do well. Uh, the plan is to, to I'm going to be competing in, in, the, in the championships. So I'm going to be trying to to do the, my best there, um, you know, no serious expectations of winning it, but I mean, who knows, you know, go into it with the, with the full hope of getting the, getting the, the number one victory there would be incredible. It'd be pretty awesome. Um, I am currently the number eight ranked, uh, dark angels player in the world on ITC rankings. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> so we'll see if I can keep that going because, uh, the new codex is coming out for the dark angels in a few weeks. And all of the previews they've been doing, I've been super stoked about. It seems like an awesome balance between uh, fluffy narrative kind of stuff and really crunchy, awesome mechanics for the game that I think they're going to make them very viable and very strong army. So I'm super excited about getting my hands on that codex and getting to try that out and uh, see where that goes, which will be a lot of fun. And I think that they'll they'll hopefully serve me well once I go off to LVO. Um, I'm waiting to to really kind of formulate a list. I've got some. I've got a list in my head. All right, that I kind of put out a bit um, that I'm excited about that I think might be pretty strong list with with some of the uh, the way our, our grim resolve is working and the way some of the stratagems are. I think it's going to be a pretty pretty effective list, and we'll see how it goes. And I need to test it, and need to try it, and see if any of the other points have changed once the actual um, once the actual codex comes out. Because Lord knows that might have that might have changed, uh, and I don't know about it, and therefore I really can't really formulate a plan. I kind of built a list based upon the the, the rules that leaked and also uh, the point values from uh, chapter approved. So I think it's probably pretty good, but it could change. So I'm going to wait until, to really start to dive into list building. Uh, but I couldn't keep myself from just trying a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what has kind of been going on with me as of right now. Um, but getting into the discussion for today, which is... Um, going talking about the viability of uh, a Primaris majority army or a Primaris only army, 
Um, honestly, I think the, 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 you know, it's, it's kind of a similar answer for all of them. Um, for both of it, I think it's, I think the fact is that Primaris models, um, are starting to find, um, to, to find an effective way of being involved in the game. Um, essentially what they are is they fill a lot of the same roles that, um, the regular Marines had. Um, but they do it in a different way for different points. So you've got uh, the Inceptors instead of Assault Marines. You've got um, the Intercessors instead of Tactical Marines. You've got the Hellblasters instead of uh, like a combination Devastator and Veteran um, kind of uh, kind of position with the, with their weapons. I guess Devastator more so than than really anything else. Um, but they're um, they're 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 becoming pretty good, and they've also come out with a lot of other um, accoutrement with the uh, with 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 the Primaris. So they've got you've got uh, Primaris Dreadnoughts with the Redemptor. You've got um, you've got the the Primaris vehicles. You've got the Primaris characters, and the characters I think are going to be the the, the real key factor in understanding whether a fully Primaris army will be viable. Uh, so let's kind of get into it. Kind of go over a lot of the the let's go over the base units that they have for the Primaris and 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 the role that I see them playing. Um, so you've got the base the base Primaris models that you have are the um, the Inceptors are the uh, Intercessors, which are basically um, the the Primaris version of Tactical Marines. So they've got the bolt rifles and they can have soccer round and roll rifles. They got regular bolt rifles. Um, but basically, they're, they're bolter marines is what they have right now. There's some that you can have with a grenade launcher, but um, honestly, essentially, they're just uh, bolter marines. And that's, that's kind of the role that they fill. Um, they, they, they're their basic troop choice for the Primaris. Um, they've got more wounds than a regular marine, and their weapons are a lot stronger, but they cost more points. Uh, so you kind of pay for, for what you get, especially with the inner, um, I think with the intercessors, um, you, you really, you get what you pay extra, you get a good value for that, but it's not excessively so. So it's not like they're like two points more expensive and therefore, you know, totally a, a must have over, over regular Marines. Uh, you also don't have the flexibility of special weapons or heavy weapons uh, with the intercessors. They're kind of just, um, you, you get what you get, which is, like I said, basically bolter. Uh, bolter stuff. So you get some extra AP with it over the regular, uh, regular bolters, um, but you don't really um, get anything else special. So like you can stick a like a, a, a plasma incinerator in an intercessor squad. Uh, but they play a good role as as um, as regular troop choices. They've got the three up armor that everyone has, um, but so you stick them in in some terrain, and suddenly now they've got a two up armor save. Uh, they've got two wounds, which is nice. Helps let them uh, stick around a lot, lot longer than one wound models. Um, their weapons, like I said, are pretty strong. The regular bolt rifle is uh, has an extra AP versus regular bolter. They've also got an extra six inch range versus the regular bolter. So they're a good choice, and they're a strong troop choice. Uh, now with everything getting um, objective secured, they have objective secured, which is nice. So you plop them on top of an objective. And they could just sit there all day, just kind of doing what they do, uh, holding that objective and fighting off enemies. Uh, they're really good against hordes because uh, they've got a, a fair amount of DACA with a bolter, and you can get them in a, a pretty big bulk of guys. Uh, so I think they're really good against uh, against hordes and also uh, lightly armored uh, troops. I think that's the best use for them. And sitting on objectives, they're very good for that. Um, like I said, they're a little bit more expensive than a tactical marine, uh, and they've got the extra wound, uh, same toughness, same everything else except for extra wound, and they've got the uh, the better bolters, and that's about it. That's what you get for paying for more. So in that regards, um, they're pretty well on par with a regular space marine army as far as the troops go with the intercessors. Uh, they're good. They're good at what they do, uh, but so are tactical marines. Tactical marines are good at what they do, and they have. The flexibility of tactical marines of the special weapons and the heavy weapons to 
to help uh, supplement them depending upon what kind of force you're expecting. So you can bring a heavy bolter if you're expecting um, a, a horde. You can bring some plasma or even a las cannon if you're expecting a lot of armor. Uh, things like that. You've got a lot more flexibility with the tactical marines than you do with the intercessors. Um, but as a troop choice, they're pretty good. They don't have the ability to infiltrate like scouts, so they're not going to be as effective at holding uh, midfield objectives as scouts are. Uh, especially scouts with camo cloaks, which had the two up armor save as well uh, in cover there. Especially if you just pop them, plop them on top of a uh, an objective in the middle of the board in some ruins. They've got a two up cover save. They're good to go. Um, that's kind of what those guys do. But the intercessors serve their point. They're really good at holding backline uh, objectives against people that come after them. Um, they're really good at throwing down a lot of DACA. They're good at at because of that extra range. They they're helpful at uh, preventing hordes from really getting into your back line so into your you know your artillery or your your tanks or anything like that they're good at preventing that from happening um so they're a solid troop choice i don't think that they're a must take over your um over your standard marines um but i do think that if you do want to take them i mean they're good they're good at what they do they're good for what they do um and i think that um with that in mind that as far as the troops go, I think they're pretty. I think that your Primaris army is is going to be uh, is is going to be pretty well uh, situated. So, uh, so that's the intercessors. Uh, then we have the inceptors, which are kind of like the uh, assault marines. They've got the jump packs. Uh, they've got their weapons. Um, I think that they 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 look like assault marines, but to be honest, I think they serve a role more close to closer to. Uh, what bikes play. So I think that, you know, they can move fast, they can move hard. Um, they've got Gravis armor, so they're toughness five, like a bike. Um, they've got the three up armor, they've got two wounds, like a bike. Um, they've got more uh, weapons options than assault marines. So, like I said, it really rings to me that uh, Inceptors really appear to be more bike like than they do um, assault marines. Um, I think that the the jump packs obviously are going to key them into that, but their ability to to move fast, strike hard with their with either the plasma guns or the um, or or the or the, uh, the what is it the assault bolters um, is is super effective, and I think I, I you know I've seen it in action. I haven't been able to run them yet myself, um, but they're they're pretty good at what they do. They're expensive, but with chapter approved. Uh, their prices did go down, so I think they've become a lot more viable. Uh, so suddenly you have an option there that can kind of take the role of bikers in your army, um, and they do it well. I think that they can that they can handle those bikes. They can handle the roles that the bikers play: moving fast, striking hard, jumping on objectives where you need them to, um, cutting off advances from the enemy where you need them to, uh, and depending upon whether you give them the, the plasma guns or you give them the bolters they're going to be going doing well at taking care of that especially as dark angels i think that the fact that they're going to have uh the, the, the they have the option for plasma i think dark angels are going to be very plasma heavy and they're going to serve that role very well especially like i said for dark angels with the ability to make those plasma plus one wound um they're they're not going to be uh plus one damage i should say they're also not going to be as they're not going to be as useful to handle it using the uh the Grim Resolve rule because they're not going to want to hold them still. You're going to want to move them fast and uh, jump them around. Uh, but then you can just put, um, you know, try to get a company master with a jump pack to follow them around. And I think you're going to be pretty good to have them up there helping you out with that. Um, so, yeah, so that's the, the Inceptors. I think they're good. They're expensive. They're still expensive. They're much cheaper and much more viable option after chapter approved. So we'll have to see how that hands out uh like i said previously they seemed a bit expensive for what they did um they they would die they, they draw a lot of aggro because of what they do and because of that if they're too expensive they're going to die fast with before they're able to really make back their points um so they're good they're not great much like bikes are in this edition honestly uh good but not great a little expensive for what they do so um that's kind of where they are at um you then have the Hellblasters, who, in my mind, are one of the top infantry units in the game right now. The, in, the Hellblasters are fantastic. 
30 inch rapid fire plasma weapons with an extra AP over other plasma weapons. Um, it's brutal. It's brutal. The fact that within for fi within 15 inches, you know, a 10 man squad is pumping out 20 shots, you know, doing two damage each, three damage if you have the stratagem from the Dark Angels, AP minus four. Heck yeah. Those plasma incinerators, those are kind of the ones I think I'd want to go with. I know there's the 36 inch heavy plasma guns, but um, I like the, the plasma incinerators. I just think the rapid fire ones, they do the job. Uh, they have the ability to that if you need them to be mobile, they can be mobile, but you don't have to because of the range that they've got. 30 inch range, they're starting to shoot at you. That's, you know, if you're doing Dawn of War, that's over half the board that you've got within range, even from the back, you know? So they're super effective. Uh, they're super brutal. The extra AP on their weapon really makes a major difference, uh, especially in this game now. You're looking at, you know, you're reducing land raiders to six up saves. Heck yeah, I'd take that any day. Um, you know, you still have invul saves to face, but everyone has that, and I think that their weapons are super effective, especially as I said with the Dark Angels. I mean, I've got Dark Angels in the brain right now because that's <laughs> what I'm excited about coming out. But at the same time, um, as I keep saying this, I think that as you see these armies coming out, they're becoming more and more effective as you have the stratagems, as you have the ability to field them differently with the codexes versus where they were when they first came out. I think when they first came out. They were fun and they were unique and the models looked awesome, but they weren't as effective. Now that the points have kind of balanced out a bit, and now that you're starting to see how some of these uh, stratagems work, um, they become much more viable. And I am going to be running the heck out of Hell Blasters. I think those guys are awesome. They look cool. They do really. They're really good at what they do, and I think they're just going to be uh, really brutal. Um, and they're going to be especially brutal in any Dark Angels force that you see out there uh so honestly they don't have the flexibility of the of the devastators like you can't take las cannons you can't take missile launchers you can't take melta any of that stuff but you can take these plasma guns that are brutal 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 and they can be super effective against both crowds of guys and also strong heavy guys you know you got 20 shots at 15 inches that's going to help you against any kind of horde army and you've got strength uh strength eight when you supercharge them uh ap minus four that's helpful against any kind of super big heavy you know you're wounding on you're wounding lehman russes on fours when you supercharge heck yeah that's awesome i'll take that any day you know i think my last cannons are definitely going to keep serving a role in my armies but hell blasters are going to be super effective and if you just want to run hell blasters i mean all i'm all for it i think that's going to be awesome um then you've got the reavers uh, the Reavers, honestly, I think they've filled the role of what the assault troops were. So the assault squads, I think, were more meant to be the Reavers. So um, versus, I know the Inceptors have the jump packs like the like the assault troops, uh, assault squads, but I think the Reavers really serve it. So if you give them the grav shoots, allow them to deep strike where they need to deep strike. Uh, they're not as fast as assault troops, but they've got extra wounds, they've got extra attacks, um, and they're they're strong. They're very very strong at what they do, which is tie up the enemy get back in the uh in the back zone and just uh wreak havoc with what's going on in their in their deployment zone and what's going on in their back zones i think that uh they're uh very effective at that i ran them at warzone atlanta they got me line breaker i think four out of my five games uh because of their ability to just uh just be awesome drop back there be tough enough to to weather even if they don't quite make the charge that first turn because i mean at this point you're looking at you know they, they're gonna have to make that nine inch charge that first time they drop in um but at the same time i think that they're uh they're effective enough and they're strong enough that they can even if they don't quite make that first charge uh, that that first turn charge i think they're strong enough most of the time to survive until the next um until the next turn so that they can have another shot at charging. And that's what you want to do with them. You want to run them up there. You want to charge. Um, you can throw the grenade. They've got grenades that, that prevent overwatch against them. They've got um, a bunch of, uh, they've got their, their AP-1 bolt pistols. So they can shoot down, weaken up a unit before they charge into them. Uh, or, like I said, even if they don't look like they're going to make a charge, they can at least shoot at something. So you drop them between two units, shoot at one unit, charge into the other suddenly you're really wreaking havoc on your on your enemy's back line you're re wreaking havoc on their ability to to really respond to you because now 
they got to pay attention to them. No matter what, they have to pay attention to them. They've got to do something about them because if they let them go, they're going to be back there getting you line breaker. They're going to be back there um, getting you um, just tying up their their infantry. If they don't have a, a shield unit and you drop them back there, suddenly you're tying up their Lehman Russes. They may not be able to kill them right away, but they're going to be able to tie them up and they just keep them in combat. They can hold their own against most things. They've got a three up armor save, which is not something to be shy about. I think it's pretty pretty good. And with the two wounds, it's awesome. It really is awesome. And they're armed with bolt pistols. I would always arm them with the, the combat knives, giving them the extra attack and the bolt pistol, uh, the heavy bolt pistol, because it's um, they're not really a shooty unit. They're not designed to be shooty. They're meant to be assaulty, and they're meant to get up in your face and get into combat as fast as possible to either kill units or tie them up and be in that back zone uh, just causing trouble. And giving them the pistols allows them to shoot during your shooting phase while they're engaged in combat. Whereas if you give them the carbines, I mean, they don't get that. And they lose a lose an attack, and they're going to be less effective. And sometimes, depending upon how your dice roll, especially if you run into a similar toughness and a similar armored unit, they could be stuck in combat for a while. But the whole point of them being there is to tie up units, get you line breaker, get you something back there um, so that the enemy doesn't really have an option to handle it. Or they have to do a lot to try to handle it. And they can't, and whatever they've directed towards them is not going against your um, affecting unit, units that you're using to be effective uh, during the game. Uh, so that's the Reavers. I really like the Reavers. I think Hellblasters are probably number one for me. Reavers are number two for me. Uh, then we have the Redemptor Dreadnought, which is one of the most gorgeous models out there. I love that model. It looks so cool. Um, it's just, it, it, it's, you know, it's nice and it's bulky and it's, and it's, you, you, it, it really embraces a lot of what I imagine the, the, the grimdark future being about like these giant suits just like <laughs> across the battlefield firing off the weapons that he has with the, uh, with that Gatling cannon and with the, uh, the options that you have between the Gatling cannon and the plasma cannon, both are good options and both are solid options. Uh, I think that the Gatling cannon, uh, is, is, I mean, I lean a little bit more towards the Gatling Cannon just because of uh, its ability to just throw out a huge amount of DACA. Uh, and Strength 6 is nothing to be shy about when it comes to, to DACA. So if you have enough shots of Strength 6, you'll probably start to start to whittle things down. You know, you're wounding most things. Um, at Most things you're going to be wounding, most non-vehicles, you're wounding on threes at that point. And beyond that, vehicles, you're wounding on fives. You're not really going to be, or monsters, you're also wounding on five. So that jump from five to six makes a big difference when it comes to um, comes to, to, to being effective and, and being able to uh, attack uh, different types of units. I also think that it, the fact that it's not a strength four and you're not going to be wounding things on sixes makes a big difference. So that's why I lean a little bit more towards the, uh, the, the Gatling Cannon just because I think that it's more versatile in the the type of target that it could be shooting at i just don't think that the number of shots that you get with the plasma cannon is is going to be as effective against uh hordes and i think that the and and, and granted the gatling cannon is not as effective strength wise against bigger things but the number of shots that you're throwing out there i think kind of makes up for that lack of difference so i, I really like the gatling cannon um and when they come out with the, those press uh, the the push fit kits I'm probably going to be getting me at least one of those just because I think it's awesome. And that's what I would really like to be running anyway. Uh, then you've got its t the tank that it's got. The uh, oh the rep re Repressor? Yes, the Repressor tank. Uh, yeah, it's got all the DACA. <laughs> that thing has all the DACA and has the ability to transport. Um, it's super strong. And I think it's, uh, I think it's a brilliant vehicle. I think it does its job very well. It looks pretty. I like the way it looks. Um, and it does the job. It's kind of a middle ground between um, like a Razorback and a Land Raider. Uh, it's got a lot more DACA options, like a like a Land Raider, um, and it's got a little bit more of the size. So it reminds me of a little bit of Land Raider, but it's not quite as durable, strong as the Land Raider. Um, I think that uh, between the two, I mean, if you're running purely Primaris, yeah, the Repressor is the way to go. Uh, but if you're having other options and you're thinking about things, I might still lean towards the land raider just because of its ability to uh, just tank the enemy's attacks upon it 
uh, and the ability. I really like the Crusader just because of the amount of DACA that you can throw out there. You run it up, it has to be something that they have to deal with because otherwise it's just going to start ripping through his army. And at toughness five, at toughness eight, sorry, it uh, it can hold its own. Uh, and the Repressor, I think, is um, it's an, it's it's something that is is really needed within the uh, with 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 uh, Primaris since they don't have any other options for transports. Uh, which I think is probably going to change in the future. But for now, you need that ability to transport them. And the fact that it's a pretty hefty gun platform doesn't hurt at all. Uh, and it's you know fast enough that it can keep up with most of your other units uh, and 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 just do what it, what it needs to do as, as a gun platform with the ability to move your other forces up with it. Um, I think... Um, and then, yeah, so they're, they're, I think that's a pretty strong choice. And I think it's a strong choice, even if you're not just running Primaris, to just run it as a gun platform, like I said. Run it as, as something akin to... Like when I run my Land Raiders nowadays, I don't necessarily just run them as transports. Their main purpose is a, a really strong and tough gun platform. And I think that the Repressor can do that as well. And I think it does it well. Uh, not only can it do it as well, it does it well. So I think it's a, it's a good option to have there. Um, and then you have all of the characters that they have. So you have uh, the Primaris Lieutenants, you have the Primaris Captains, you got the Captain in Gravis Armor, you've got uh, the, the Chaplain, you've got the Primaris Librarians, you've got the Primaris Apothecaries. Uh, I think like the only one that you don't have is a, a Primaris Tech Marine, which, uh, you know, at this point, since you really only got the one Primaris um, vehicle, it's not really as big. I guess you get the Atreus Super Heavy Tank, uh, but that's that's a little neither here nor there. <laughs> uh, it's super cool, but it's also, um, I mean, most people aren't going to be able to afford that kind of thing. It's super expensive, super huge, um, and super cool, but super huge, like I said. Um, I think that uh, because of that, there's not as much of a call for uh, Primaris Tech Marines, but it's also kind of ironic that the Primaris coming from Mars don't have a tech marine. <laughs> Maybe that says something that if the <laughs> that if Mars doesn't want the Primaris technology for its tech marines, then uh, then then what does it say about what it's doing? Uh, I know that's gonna that's gonna have a lot of you guys that don't like the Primaris <laughs> giving a little fuel to the fire there. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, they're they're super strong. They're doing they do super th cool things. Uh, the fact that they're all of those uh, character models are plus one wound. Because their Primaris is effective, and I think it makes a big difference, you know, uh, especially when you're, you know, when you've got the uh, the Primaris Librarian, it, it, you're not as afraid to perils, you know. Regular Librarians, you can you can absolutely survive that first perils, but that second perils becomes a little bit more iffy because you fail one perils, you you suffer one perils, you can die on the second one no matter what if you're a regular Librarian, but if you roll a one with a Primaris Librarian then you're, you can suffer a second one without dying. And I think that makes a big difference. You know, even if you suffer two, you still got, you know, three wounds left in that Primaris Librarian. You know, you would have to roll, you've got a one-third chance of dying on that second uh, Perils. Um, the fact that the the Gravis armor that you see on, like, the, uh, like the Captain in Gravis armor that you see the Inceptors with, uh, giving that plus one toughness is super effective and super strong. Uh, I think it's it, it does a good thing, a good job of keeping people around. Uh, the Primaris lieutenants are wonderful, giving out that plus one rerolling for rerolling ones to wound. Uh, the fact that they've got the extra wound, like I've said, uh, the fact that they're just kind of up in the they can be up in the thick of things. Uh, they've got some different options when it comes to their weapons. I'm super excited for the Primaris lieutenant that's coming out for the Dark Angels. I think it looks super cool, even with that. Uh, with that smirk, with that punchable face smirk, I think it's super cool. Uh, so I think it'd be kind of, I think it's fun that they're they're getting a lot more options for their weapons and making them that they can serve whatever role you need them to. So if you want to run them with a unit that's supposed to get into the thick of things, get into the fight, throw a, a power sword on him, and suddenly you've got like a really really effective hitting on twos, effective um, close combat character that can run up there and help everyone else reroll the ones to wound. Uh, if you're wanting to sit back with a gun line, throw a Mastercraft out of a bolt rifle on him, and you've got 24-inch range, two shots, um, which is super effective and helpful at just keeping other enemy, keeping the enemy at bay before they can get up in your face and, and lock in with your 
with your gun line or your dreadnoughts or whatever it might be. Um, and everything else, like I said, you know, you've got the, you've got chaplain, you've got apothecary. They're all doing the job that all of the other ones do for the regular Marines, except now that they're on Primaris Marines, which is super cool and, uh, and fun. So yeah, those are all the different variances kind of, uh, showing their, how they stack up with their, with their regular Marine counterparts. And it leaves you with the main question of, is a fully Primaris army a viable option? And I say yes. I think at this point, based upon the number of characters that we've gotten, the way they've adjusted the point values, the kind of options that they have for weapons, they are a viable option. Do I think you're, they're your best option? No, I don't think so. I think that they don't have any air support. Makes it a hard call to make it an only army. Um, I think the 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 lack of options in certain areas, like uh, you don't have much option for las cannons in Primaris unless you've got uh, unless you put it on the repressors, and those can get kind of expensive if you want to run more than just one. Um, I think the the versatility of a marine army is usually what's its strength. It makes its uh, it makes it more uh, able to to create those all comers lists uh, that can really be an effective punch and make them um, the, 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 the their versatility is what makes them effective in the game because there are armies that are faster there are armies that are uh, there that are stronger there are armies that are more resilient but space Marines have a versatility that a lot of other armies don't and that versatility is what makes space Marines so effective and the primaris don't quite have as much versatility as everyone else as the other marines and because of that i don't think that they are um, in on their own the strongest option i think if you're running a space marine army they are a great addition to that army and i mean my competitive list will involve a couple of them at least hell blasters and reavers and because of that i see them filling certain roles much better than others you know i don't i think that hell blasters are going to be doing a better job than veterans with plasma guns. I think that Reavers do a better job than assault Marines with jump packs. I think that, um, and, and, and I think that Primaris Lieutenants do a better job than regular Lieutenants because I like the extra wound. I like those different aspects of it. So in certain aspects, I think that Primaris are a better option than the regular Marines, but only to serve sp uh, particular roles. I don't think that they have quite have the versatility that makes Marines effective. I don't think they quite have the versatility um, that you need to, to create a, a, an all comers list that can be as effective as a Marine list. And because of that, I don't think that they uh, are your best option as a Marine player for creating a solely Primaris army. I think you can make an army that incorporates Primaris Marines that's far more effective on the battlefield than just a Primaris only army. So uh, yeah, that's my take. I think they're awesome. I think the new models look sweet. I mean, look at that. That just looks so cool. So, so cool. You know, um, I just think that the, the what they've done with these models, what they've done with the vehicles, what they've done with everything in the Primaris line uh, is, is beautiful. I think the new sculpts are, are fantastic. Same thing as they've done with the Death Guard, which are technically regular Marines. Um, I just think the new lines that they're coming out with are just wonderful and beautiful and, and, and evocative models that really make me want to model them and really make me want to play them. Um, um, not, that, not that the other Marines are bad. I mean, look at this guy. This guy's super cool looking too. Badass with a power fist, you know? Um, but at the same time, I don't... Um, at the same time, I just I don't think that they quite have enough. And I mean, it's early on. It's it's been less than a year that the that the Primaris models have been in, uh, into the game, and I they, they keep coming out with more and more different things and different options for them uh, as they're going along. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention was the uh, the aggressors. Those guys are brutal. They are the ultimate in crowd control. Whether you run them with the flamers, whether you run them with the um, with the bolt storm gauntlets, whatever it is, those guys are super brutal at holding the line and being uh, just badasses at taking out hordes, you know? And I think with Dark Angels especially, getting to reroll ones when they stand still, when they stand still now in their movement phase, they get to fire twice and they get to reroll ones as Dark Angels. Hell yeah. 
that's awesome. You know, just sit back and just like put them in front of your gun line, in front of you know your Azrael bomb, your Azrael parking lots. You got Azrael, you got your dreadnoughts, getting the rerolls, getting the four up invul save. You throw some aggressors in there, and suddenly now that orc horde that comes across there that I've always had trouble with, boom, just wipe them out as they come across the board. You get to fire twice with their weapons. So if you've got um, a five-man squad with the with the with the flamers, you're looking at um, what is that? Uh, 10 d twenty d six shots of flamers getting in there. That's that's brutal. <laughs> that's brutal. And you've got the flame, the bolt storm gauntlets. It's what is it? Six shots, six shots each guy. So it's twelve shots each guy. So you're looking at sixty shots sitting still, rerolling ones to hit, hitting on threes, rerolling ones to hit. Whew, that's brutal. That is super brutal. And there's not a lot of uh, that horde armies can do to to stand up against them. You know, and I think they've got the Gravis armor, so they've got their toughness four, so they're not slouches. They're not going to go down real quick, and they're just going to be able to pump out the DACA to take out any kind of horde that comes your way. And with that number of shots, you're eventually going to make your opponent fail saves and fail rolls, so you're probably going to be able to take out some big nasties too with those. Those guys are cool. And I think they're going to serve a big role, especially going forward in a lot of armies, just because of their ability to 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 handle a lot of the hordes that are coming i bet you once especially once the orcs get their codex watch out i think that green tide is going to be um a force to be reckoned with and i think it's going to be interesting uh and then i think you'll see a lot more aggressors on the table because of that because of that uh, their the necessity of being able to handle them like that um but yeah like i said primaris are awesome i think they look cool i really think they're uh, an awesome addition to the game uh, great looking models, a lot of fun to work with. Uh, they serve certain roles very, very well. Their point values are starting to adjust and get back to a place that I think makes them um, viable options, not necessarily auto takes, um, other than Hell Blasters and Dark Angels armies. <laughs> um, I don't think that they're auto takes. I think that they are viable options, and I think they are a good way to go. Um, I don't think that the line is quite there to be able to hold its own as. A, a competitively viable option i think you can have fun and i think you could win games with it but i think when you put them into a tournament setting and you're running in against a lot of the more competitive uh, builds for all the other armies that eventually you're going to run into something that you're just going to have a tough time handling you know um but i think that they are going to be very effective and i think you're going to see a lot of them in a lot of uh, our armies going forward especially like i said the hell blasters I think by and far are going to be the most useful of the models, and I think you you pay for them. You know they're they're not cheap. Uh, their weapons aren't cheap. They're not cheap, but they do a lot of work, and I think that's going to be a lot of fun to see them on the on the field doing that. Uh, yeah, so that's just my thoughts. Um, like I said, I think they're viable. I just don't think they're quite as strong as um, as other marine builds that you can use. Having the wide, I mean, the marine line is is huge. There's so many different options that you have. Uh, I just, I just don't see that the limited line that you have in Primaris taking over that spot right now. I just don't think that they have the versatility. I don't think they have the diversity of abilities and models to handle um, everything else that comes out. That every, all the other forces that are out there. Because the reason Space Marines uh, consistently do well is their versatility and their ability to. Um, reasonably respond to to the majority of the threats out there um but they're doing good and who knows what happens maybe they'll come out with some more stuff they'll come out with uh different options and make them a different kind of force so that you can just take them on their own and they'll be just as effective but right now not quite as effective as using them in conjunction with other marines um but still really cool really good and the models look awesome so uh, let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of you guys don't like the Primaris. There's a lot of arguing about whether they should be involved, especially in a lot of the non-Codex armies. You know, you hear a lot of it with, um, you know, Blood Angels players aren't happy that they're not, they don't look like they have the Black, uh, the Black Rage right now. Um, Space Wolf players don't see them because they don't have the, the, the like the, like the Gene Steel Seed uh, troubles, that they don't see them integrating quite as well. Um, uh, I, I mean, they're, they're coming out with a, 
the, with a Dark Angels novel about the rub between the secretive nature of the regular Dark Angels and the Primaris Marine. So, so even Black Library is 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 all on board with that kind of discussion as to the role that they fit in the Dark Angels. So, I know a lot of people have questions and concerns about how they fit into the armies. You know, they're talking about you know the calls, you know, calls creations that they're that they're just uh, that they're just uh, Gilliman's. Uh, lap dogs sent out to go uh infiltrate the other the other chapters um but i think they're cool i like them a lot i think they're fun models i think they do a really good job on the tabletop and i think lore wise they added an extra spice you know i think they add something extra i think it's really interesting and the fact that they're coming out with a novel about that kind of rub between the primaris and the regular marines with the dark angels just goes to show you that it's a really interesting route and an interesting uh, line of thought and discussion. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, keep the conversation going. Let me know both fluff wise and mechanically how you like the Primaris and whether and especially whether or not uh, you like them as a as, as the only thing in an army. So the, the reason that sparked to me a bit is uh, one of my friends, David, is building up a Primaris exclusive army. And he's talking about viable options and running multiple Redemptors and running uh, money, uh, multiple Repressors and things like that, that I think are, it's, I mean, he points out, it's a pretty, it's a pretty strong list that he, that he, that he puts together. Um, but like I said, uh, I just don't see it being quite as um, uh, versatile as regular Marines in, in forming up lists, but I think he's doing a good job and I think he runs Runs it pretty awesome, so it should be interesting to see what he does and uh, and see what everyone else does. So if anyone else out there is running only Primaris models in their army, let me know. I'd love to hear what you're doing and what your options are and what your thoughts are on the whole process. So uh, I hope you guys have all enjoyed that. I certainly have. I have been Phil the Glacial Geek as always, and until next time, have fun.